Hey everyone, it's Sonia here. Big news today coming out of Quebec. So they finally came to a decision about what to do with the unvaccinated people. Um, and that's not all. The public health director of Quebec, Horacio Arruda, has resigned. He submitted um, some kind of a letter explaining why he was doing this, with the main thing being that he felt that there was an erosion of public trust in the um, the health measures, you know. Sorry, I'm all stuffed up. You guys know I just had the COVID and I got over all the like main symptoms and I was left after with a very stuffy nose and a cough. So sorry, I've got the snuffle up, I guess now. That's what I feel like. I'm so stuffed up. Like I'll read you a little excerpt here. The recent remarks made on the credibility of our opinions and on our scientific rigor undoubtedly cause a certain erosion in the adhesion of the population, meaning, you know, people's willingness to follow public health measures. So he said, in this context, I consider it appropriate to offer you the possibility of replacing me before the end of my term in office. Um, I'm going to tell you a little bit about what they're saying in the French papers, but there, there is a rumor going around that actually he wasn't hard enough on the unvaccinated and that the Legault government was going to fire him. That this rumor came from someone who claims that their wife knows his wife and that his wife had said uh, if he doesn't resign, they're going to fire him. I don't know if this is true. That's just the rumor. Um, so here, oh, I'm going to like, if, you, if you're going to stick with me like through the whole video, you're going to see I'm going to show you a little bit about what had been going on in our media that led up to this. So this was from uh, ici Radio-Canada. It's in French. Uh, the departure of Aruda, an opportunity or an occasion to rethink the management of the pandemic. His successor will benefit from a greater independence in his uh, avis. Well, his opinions or his like um, advice to assure the adhesion of the population pleads the College of Medicines. What this means is that his successor will basically have more authority, like more ability to just make decisions um, to ensure the that the people will follow the public health measures. Hmm. Yeah, because they put some. Basically, what they did was they closed all the places that were already using the QR code. So this really pissed off the vaccinated people. And they imposed a curfew on everyone, which also, again, really pissed off the vaccinated people. And apparently, according to surveys, uh, people are saying that they're, they're not likely to follow the, the public health measures, as in... I think what they're talking about is people are gathering because there's supposed to be no private gatherings. But from what I understand, a lot of people have answered on this survey. And we know that surveys are how the governments make their decisions around here. People answered on the survey that they did not intend to follow these measures. Like they're still having people over for one. So here on Radio Canada... Here's a commentary from Dr. André Veillette, immunologist and researcher at the Institut de Recherche Clinique de Montréal, who had some things to say about Dr. Ruda. He says he was very useful to rally the population to combat the pandemic, but with time, he became more tired can imagine and there are certain of his decisions or recommendations that had become controversial he also seemed to be a bit déphasé avec ce que la science internationale disait so like not exactly um up to date with what international science was saying and they gave some examples that you know in the beginning he had told people there was no need to wear masks which Fauci did as well we, it's like he's our Fauci kind of here. First, he says, don't wear a mask. Then he says, you got to wear a mask. Then he said, uh, you know, he says N95s are better. But then he says, no, actually, N95s are not really better. So there's no need to give them to the healthcare workers. Like we got a lot of that kind of stuff here. And um, 
there were some other ones too let me see uh you know everything from like ventilation to masks i give a lot of contradictory statements when mr aruda spoke to his experts uh we never knew who he was speaking to he said my experts have told me this or my experts have told me that says dr andre veillette i'll i'll tell you i i tend to believe the um this rumor that uh, actually Aruda was not enough of a hard ass and and that, that that's why he's out and there there's another side to this whole story too which is that the um the government Legault's government is being investigated for their role in the Ikatom but like this massive um you know a lot of people dying in the first wave in the retirement homes uh to be Frank, what the words that came up in our media here were things like euthanasia and, uh, you know, neglected to death, starved and dehydrated to death. It was estimated maybe as many as half of the COVID deaths from the first wave in the retirement homes were actually caused by neglect and or the administration of end of life drugs. For example, the respiratory protocol, which they put people on. And this was all declared in the court. Eh? This is this is none of this is rumors. They gave people, uh, as soon as they had a positive test, they gave them morphine, Ativan, and scopolamine. And it turned out that they even gave that to people who had never tested positive. So there's been this huge inquiry here with the coroner. Her name is Gan Kamel. And apparently this is coming up to a close. Uh, a lot of documents had been requested from the Lego government that they were not necessarily 100% forthcoming. I didn't follow everything about the trial, but the bottom line is that there has been an inquest in these deaths and in what role the government played in it. And it seemed like they were really trying to get out of um, admitting responsibility. I'll give you one example. It was understood, first of all, when the pandemic hit, all the family members were asked to um, change the levels of care for their their loved ones who were in the CHSLDs. They were asked to put it to the lowest so that no really, uh, you know, no heroic measures or even basic measures would be taken to save people's lives if they had COVID. Also, people who were in these retirement homes were not brought to the hospital by ambulance. And in the inquest, the government said, well, I think that they misunderstood we weren't saying that they couldn't bring them to the hospital by ambulance, uh, that we, we didn't give those directives, but somehow this is how it was understood. And I know that that's true because I remember even when I went to my mother's current retirement home, I, I talked to an ambulance driver who had said that they don't bring them to the hospital. They treat them there, although they have no IV fluids and et cetera. It's not a hospital. They just they just leave them there and just treat them there. So this practice of not bringing them to the hospitals was commonplace. Everyone thought that that was the protocol. But now in the inquest, the government was saying, well, we didn't actually tell them they can't bring them to the hospital. I don't know what happened, but there was a lot of, you know, really dirty and dark stuff going on. And it just finally got to the point where all the stuff was coming out in the courts and now, now um, it's. I think that they need someone to blame. They need to make the public feel like the right people have been blamed. And I feel like maybe Aruda is being actually scapegoated a bit. I don't know if it's true that he wasn't hard enough, but it seems like the goal here is that rather than blame Legault's disastrous mismanagement of the pandemic in the retirement homes and like, you know, the deaths that this caused um, and also the disastrous management of the hospitals. Like there's still no ventilation. They still didn't get any five N95. The rapid tests were not deployed until like right before Christmas. It was a total disaster. A lot of things like that, that they could have done. They didn't do. And um, they need to blame someone. So it's better for them if the whole population directs all their anger at the 10% of people who have not taken a vaccine. As I mentioned in my other videos, whether those people are at risk or not, they're all put together because this includes the recovered who in this part of the world don't get credit for being recovered and the vulner vulnerable unvaccinated. So those people are all like just considered one group and uh, 
it, it seems like the goal of the media and the government has been to take all the frustration and anger of the vaccinated public and take the spotlight off the government and what they've done badly in this pandemic and direct it all at the unvaccinated segment of, of the population. Because at this point, okay, remember, these are eight, we have 8.5 million people here. And with 250 people in the ICU out of this whole population, they, they consider that that is so much that uh, it's making the hospital system break. When uh, the reality is that two years in, our hospital system is in way worse shape than it was before because of a lot of mismanagement and because a lot of their vaccinated staff are now out on sick leave. They're all in quarantine. So I think it's been a lot easier for them to just make people want to have a convenient scapegoat. <laughs> and that would be the people who haven't taken the shot. So Aruda's gone. He's being replaced by someone called Luc Boileau, a doctor apparently was like the head of the INSPQ, which is like our National Institute of Health here in, uh, in Quebec. Um, it has been pointed out that his daughter is, um, his, da his daughter Marjorie Côté Boileau is the press secretary of uh, Christian Dubé, the health minister. Was that a conflict of interest? I don't know. Maybe they're just a very cozy family. They're, they're, these people are all just very cozy with each other. Um, CBC Christy Snell says uh, Kate McKenna requested an interview with Dr. Boileau. Uh, she got a speedy no. Um, anyway, they did a they did a press conference and introduced the new director of public health. When Aruda stepped down, a lot of people were like, "Yay! Finally, one of the three is out." Now we need to get rid of Dubé and Lego as if it's going to be a better thing. But I personally don't think it's going to be any better. I think that maybe um, Luc Boileau is just going to be more willing to do whatever the CAQ wants. Don't forget, it was Francois Lego who said back in the day, people who don't think like us, we have to get rid of them. That this is their this is their approach, and it's weird too. Way like when they do their press conference, they have these very very calm voices. They always speak in a very calm way, like they've got everything under control. When really it's a complete shit show. But I guess the way that they talk makes their, you know, their their constituents or their followers or whatever uh, trust them. Anyhow, so here's part two uh, of what's changed. Um, Quebec is going to uh, apply a kind of tax to the unvaccinated. So anyone who hasn't had their shots is going to be taxed. They're going to call it like a health tax. <laughs> because you're not vaccinated. So it's all your fault that the system is uh, overwhelmed and screwed up. So it's only fair that you pay a tax. They said it has to be a significant amount. So it's not going to be fifty or a hundred dollars. I'm not sure what they're thinking. They haven't said. And so this is to offset the costs. Offset the cost of all this pandemic on the health system. Um, they're going to make the unvaccinated pay for it. Uh, well, the idea being that because they're not vaccinated. Oh wait, no, because that sounded kind of punitive. It sounded like well, you didn't get vaccinated, so now we're going to punish you. We're going to fine you, right? But but no, that. That would, I think, not be legal. So the logic is, because uh, that would be like a mandatory vaccination. So the logic is, well, since you didn't get your shots, and then you could eat, end up in, a, in, a, in an ICU, the higher risk of hospitalization, which we've heard a million times. Uh, so because of that, then it's fair to make you like sort of preemptively like pay your contribution for when you end up in the hospital. Again, no distinction made for the recovery, though. I don't know. It's just it's just if you haven't taken the shot, then you have to do this. But even the vaccinated people who are going to be like, well, that's fine because I had my shots and I'm not going to pay a tax. Well, then they're, they're going to have to get their third one and then the fourth and the fifth and, and really whatever else the government decides they have to do. And a lot of people who got the two doses and are not so keen on getting the third, they're all going to be relegated as unvaccinated. They're all going to have to pay the tax. But in the press conference, they asked them, like, 
is this even legal? And they and the government said, well, we're working on figuring out the legal aspect of it. I imagine there could be some court actions. I mean, why would you tax people who have natural immunity? I don't know. It's just the way they do things around here. So that's the plan. So it's not in effect yet. It would be something that would be on your taxes, which is weird because the only tax... There's like income tax and then you have certain like contributions you have to make like to your retirement or to whatever else that are taken out of your check. So would it be taken out directly? Uh, or would you have to like, when you do your taxes, prove that you're vaccinated and you don't have to pay it? Or would everybody be given this like tax and then the, the vaccinated are exempted from it? That's maybe one way they could do it. Um, oh, I can just imagine like how, how many people will, will get taxed when they shouldn't have and, and I'm trying to get their money back. And I, I'm sure like even there's been problems with the QR code and I can just imagine how this is going to go. It probably won't happen overnight. They've basically made, ma uh, they've basically made vaccination mandatory without making it mandatory, you know, but they didn't say anything about locking people out of the grocery stores in the end. So retail people said no, and it's unenforceable. And uh, with this Luc Boileau at the helm, I have a feeling it's not going to be any better than it was. So that's the update. Thanks for listening to me, and I'll see you next time.